So the nature of our seminar is it's all about sharing uh, stories. Jesus always share and teach using parables and stories, you know, about uh, faith, about courage, about discipleship, about the kingdom of God. So s stories is will really stick to us. In fact, uh, you know, even modern day literature, they use stories of the Bible to study uh, ancient literature. So uh, you'll find uh, that we'll go to uh, the first lesson, the significance of evangelism. And when it, when it comes to the significance of evangelism, um, you will find that uh, Luke chapter 15 is a very important passage. You will find that uh, William Barclay says that Luke 15 is the essence of which Christ came and proclaimed the good news. And you will find that it is one story, but told in three different ways. There's only one reason for that, and the reason is the intensity and the importance of the story of evangelism. But I would like you to look at the uh, starting point of this chapter. It starts in verse 1. You will find that the Pharisees were complaining why Jesus was spending too much time with the tax collectors and the sinners. They did not like that. Jesus, if he claimed to be a teacher, if he claimed to be a rabbi, if he claims to be someone in their category of religious person, he should not be spending time with uh, tax collectors, sinners, people who were questionable. And yet, you will find that Jesus was spending time with them. Okay? People who probably at the time were not, I would say, like pleasing in the eye as far as hanging out. So that is the story of Luke chapter 15. And so Jesus, okay, uh, used the story of the lost son, the lost coin, and the lost sheep in order to change the worldview when it comes to evangelism. Uh, the reason for that is that in the Old Testament, okay, there are two forces in the Bible. In the Old Testament, there is a force that is centripetal, okay? When we say centripetal, that means uh, at the center, you know? The focus is at the middle, right here, okay? So that is the Old Testament way, and the focus is Israel. And then you will find that the command in the language goes like this, come to Israel, come to the, the promised land, come to the people of God. And then you will find that the foundation is from Genesis chapter 12, verse 1 to 3. Okay, that is very clear. You will find in Genesis 12, chapter 12, it says, I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. And I will bless those who bless you. Look at this. I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you, and you will, your name will become great. That means, you know, Israel, and you will be a blessing. See, that is the focus. Israel, the people of God. Look at this. Whoever will curse you will be cursed. And all the peoples of the earth will be blessed through you. That's where you, you know, where we are, the Gentile world. Israel is the focus. Come to the temple. Come to Mount Zion. Come to even church. And yet, you will find when Jesus was teaching Luke chapter 15, the shift has drastically and radically changed. Look at as well in Isaiah chapter 49, and verse 6, on the mandate of Israel be, being a great nation. I will make you alive to the Gentiles, and you will bring many salvation to the ends of the earth. And yet, Jesus introduced a different force. This time, it's called the centrifugal force, a force that is outside. Look at how it shifted from coming inside, going outside. The focus is no longer the temple or Israel. The command and the language is no longer come, but go into the whole world. And then you will find that the foundation is Matthew chapter 2, 19 to 20. So let's just go uh, to that. Therefore, go! 
That's it. Come and make disciples to all nations. So look at that. From the center, which is the church or Israel, we are to go to the world. Okay? In fact, you will find that uh, in Acts chapter 1 8, there is actually a, a direction to that. Jerusalem, Judea, and where? Ends of the earth. Okay? So that is the two forces. You will find centripetal coming in and centrifugal going out. This must operate in the church. Okay? And uh, Luke chapter 15 is a change of that worldview. Because in the Old Testament, they were just looking at Israel. Come. And even to this day, Israel is looking at that. You know, that salvation will only come to them and through them. When Jesus uh, sat down and explained to the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the scribes, he said, man, let's go out. And he used the first story. And the first story is about the lost sheep. First, we need to evangelize because of the priority Christ has given to the lost. Okay. The priority, the importance of going to them first. I remember John Stott who said that the church is the only institution that benefits not its members. Can I hear an amen? <laughs> That's very good. <laughs> In other words, the priority should be outside. Look at the lost ship. Okay? Look, the cause was what? Accidental. The ship probably has, has uh, wandered and lost its the Martian. How many of you watched that movie? Yeah. And the rest of the astronaut just left and left, uh, left one guy right there to survive for how many years? That's the whole story. Uh, but they said, it's, you know, it's okay. Because I would rather that we survive, all of us. But that is not the story here. The story is that he left the 99 behind and went for that one lost sheep. And then you will find the character. He, 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 for a moment, he found the, the, the lost one, put it on his shoulder. And he was so glad. And here's the thing, the celebration. He goes home and invites his friends and neighbors. Okay? Priority. That is important. Why do we need to evangelize? Because there are people out there who accidentally has wandered their way. And we need to look after them. Spend more time to them. The problem is that I believe many times, and I'm going to make a case later on about this, we spend 80% of our time more to the temple people, the church people, and not the people who are lost. Why do we need to evangelize? Because of the... Uh, not after the priority, but the prize Christ has given to the lost. The story is now about the lost coin. Here is a woman who had ten drachmas, that's the coin, and one drachma is actually equivalent to uh, one day's wage. So probably in the U.S., you're talking about uh, maybe uh, $100, okay? Now, you know, or, or, or less, 75 and, and, and the lost coin goes like this. Look at the, the cost. Unintentional. Why? Because that coin is inanimate. It doesn't have any, you know, volition or intellect to choose. It's, it's not a living object. There are some people who are lost. Just because, you know, they're lost. They're born in an environment, don't have a choice. They're surrounded by that. And that is why uh, they're lost. <coughs> And you will find that this woman started to panic and was so anxious. Now, I'm like that. I may not be the shepherd who lost one sheep, but I am definitely this one. If I have 10 things that I'm doing, and if I need to find one, like, for example, this pen, this uh, Bluetooth pen for my, for my tablet got lost, I have 10 things I need to do, but I need to find that pen. <laughs> now, I'm like that. The, the, why? Because... It's not just the coin, I believe. This woman probably could lose one day's wage. But there's a lot, probably, of things attached to the coin. You know what I mean? It's just a piece of paper. Maybe it is just a picture. But boy, that picture is so important. I need to have that picture. Maybe it is just a jar. Maybe it is just a mug. But the price 
is very, very important. How many of you agree with me on this? Yeah. Okay. And so she started to panic. And then she lit a lamp and searchfully went every nook and corner of the house until she found it. Now that is amazing. Rejoice with me. I have found the coin. She called the neighbors and her friends. So the prize is important. Why do we need to evangelize? The prize. Next, because of the passion of the lost. Now Jesus, with his audience this time, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the scribes, his first story, the lost suit, second story, the lost coin, but this one is the most powerful one because it strikes home to many of us because we are a son, we are a daughter, we have a parent, we have a dad. And you will find the things here, you know, we don't have to go through the... Um, you don't have to go through the uh, passage, but look at the lost son. This one is not accidental. The cause of being lost is not because it is unintentional. It is volitional. He made a decision. He said, Dad, I want my part of the inheritance. I think I am mature enough to go and find my purpose in life. It was volitional. There are people who are lost today because of bad decision, bad judgment, okay? So you will find that the concern of the father, he showed so much compassion to give that money, but at the same time, to have compassion to wait. The moment the son came back, I love this. He ran to him, he threw his arms, and he kissed him. That is amazing. That talks about the nature and the character of the father. And then this one, the biggest uh, outcome, feast and celebration. He said, give my son the best coat. And he put on a ring on his son. And he said, put on the best leather uh, a footwear. And let's have a big celebration. Wow, that's amazing. That is why we need to evangelize. Now look at this. And as we expound on this, it's amazing. If you look at the story, from 1 to 99, you will find the lost sheep. That's the, okay, that's the, uh, that's the uh, ratio. The lost coin is 1 is to 9. When it comes to the lost son, the ratio 1 is to 1. It did not at all, I'm sorry, bother, you know, Jesus. In, my, in other words, he is compassionate and he has the priority, the passion, and the price for the one that is lost. Are you following me? That is an amazing order. That ratio is amazing. The cause of the one who is lost, accidental, unintentional, volitional, and yet, in the same manner, Jesus would look after them. Now, we don't have to look for the people who are lost and give them a lesson. Why did you make the decision? But he just went after them. That is amazing. Okay? And then the concern, you will find the priority, the prize, the passion, the character. You'll find him loving these people, seeking after them, and waiting every day until that son will come back. So, you know, the moment he, these people came back, he made sure that they would have one beautiful, exuberant, luxurious celebration. Took all the friends and had a feast and the celebration.